In hidden corners of the world, governments are testing unidentified flying objects. But are they of extraterrestrial origin? This is, indeed, an unidentified flying object. Are classified radical aircraft designs responsible for many UFO sightings? It may be the biggest story in history. Does the American government possess nine alien spacecraft? Potentially, a person seeing one of these aircraft could think that it wasn't an aircraft, it was a spaceship. Is it test flying them to reveal the secrets of interstellar travel? Repetitive pulsing, booming noise, like somebody unzipping the sky. But beware, not all is as it seems. What is the truth? Discovery's cameras will show you a base that does not exist, officially. Everybody loves a base that doesn't exist. Aircraft that don't exist. All we can really say is it was traveling faster than the speed of sound. And a man who says he worked for the US government involving nine flying saucers or flying disks all together. With us, enter the deep black world that is dreamland. Aircraft are often confused with UFOs. I've seen it before, you've had UFO enthusiasts and stealth watchers in the same area. And when they see a light, someone who is an enthusiast and knows what aircraft look like automatically says, oh, well, look, it's a B-1 bomber. But for a, someone who is a UFO enthusiast and wants to see a UFO, that light automatically becomes the mothership. In 1992, Steve Douglas was filming military air exercises at Roswell, New Mexico. In the near dark, his camera caught a few seconds of a very strange triangular craft. He took the fuzzy picture to an expert. This is probably your proverbial tantalizing image because it is something we believe is, is an unusual aircraft, one that the government doesn't admit they have, so it would be exciting to be able to get a good, clear picture of it because this is just interesting. It's, 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 it's exciting. It's exciting to discover something unknown. I mean, this is a black aircraft against a black sky, and there's a lot of noise in the frame, so that anytime you look at the aircraft, it's almost the same color as the background. This is a, a cleaned up, processed image that I did using, if you would, pure image processing. But that's still awfully noisy, and it's very hard to see anything. But it would be very easy to use a computer to help clean it up, to go in and electronically you know, look at the image and say, wow, that's, that's the sky and that's noisy. And here are the edges of the object and I'll just clean them up. I'll smooth out those edges. Well, the problem with that is if I have expectations about what I'm going to see and I use those in the work I'm doing, then what I end up getting is exactly what I was looking for. I can make it anything I want, a flying saucer or you name it. It, it is obviously flying, it's obviously unknown, so it is definitely a UFO, but that doesn't mean it's a spaceship from another planet or a time traveler or a fill in the blank. We have strong suspicions that this is in fact a highly secret, highly stealthy reconnaissance airplane that the government has and has operated, but for reasons of security, they haven't admitted that they own or operate it. This is indeed a, an unidentified flying object. This is what Steve Douglas filmed, the TR-3 Black Manta. It does not exist officially. Is the Black Manta sighting a one-off? In the last five years, the description of UFOs has changed. Reports of triangular craft are as common as traditional saucer shapes. Last year, a British Airways flight from Milan descended to land at Manchester, England. Suddenly, a triangular craft flashed past the airliner just yards in front of its nose. Neither the airliners nor ground control's radar detected the high-speed craft. It was a classic close encounter. But with what? Newspaper headlines screamed that an alien spacecraft had buzzed the jetliner. 
What they did not report was what specialist aviation magazines already knew. Less than 15 miles away, a British company is building the top secret prototype of a stealth aircraft. It has a strange triangular shape. It is an unidentified flying object, a UFO. Strange aircraft are often reported in the press. Some become famous, others never make it beyond the prototype. They are UFOs. They do not exist, officially. And fly from a base that does not exist, officially. The home of America's deep black aircraft is hidden in the Nevada nuclear test site. For decades, nuclear warheads were tested here. It's not a safe place for the unwary to venture. Las Vegas is nearby, but the tourists play unaware of the black world hidden over the horizon. Area 51 of the test site is Groom Lake. Aircraft call sign, Dreamland. Groom Lake appears in no list of military installations. And yet, it has the longest runway in the world and the biggest aircraft hangar. What it holds is above top secret. Dreamland does not exist officially. And yet, it has attracted so much public attention that maps of the base are now available. To enter here means risking imprisonment without trial. The use of lethal force is authorized. It was from Groom Lake that the great spy planes of the Cold War were operated in complete secrecy. The U-2, the CIA's spy plane, was first flown here. Later, the family of aircraft that include the SR-71 Blackbird lived in top secrecy for more than 10 years. The Blackbird flew faster and higher than any aircraft. Like the U-2, it was invulnerable until missile technology made it obsolete. Unknown to the general public, the stealth fighter was tested here. Top secret aircraft have been confused with UFOs for half a century. In the mid and late 40s, it was a period of fantastic development in aviation. Today we can't appreciate it, but there were airplanes without propellers. That was akin to a car without a motor. There were airplanes without tails. There were airplanes that were disc-shaped. There were airplanes with swept wings. Potentially, a person seeing one of these aircraft could think that it wasn't an aircraft, it was a spaceship. A person not knowing about these aircraft would think that there's something beyond earthly performance and assume that these were, in fact, flying saucers. The world's first reported sighting of flying saucers was, in fact, of flying wings. Pilot Kenneth Arnold saw delta wing craft, not disks. After he made the sighting and landed, Kenneth Arnold talked with several other pilots, and their idea was that it was some type of U.S. secret weapon, a guided missile, or it had been built by the Soviets. Later, the idea came up that these were not earthly vehicles, but alien vehicles based on their performance and maneuvers, which could not be matched reportedly by any earthly materials or um, they could not be survived by the human body. The US government did make an attempt to build a flying saucer. The Avro car was probably the best lawnmower ever built. The pilot had to wear an oxygen mask to keep from choking on the grass clippings. It was essentially a hovercraft. It was only a technological demonstrator for a whole family of very remarkable aircraft. The Lockheed Skunk Works, California. Generations of deep black aircraft were built here. 
In recent years, its parking lot has remained full. Yet officially, it has little work underway. Too little to explain all the activity. Production of the Blackbird spy plane is long finished. Its last contract was for the stealth fighter. That is near completion. It cannot explain the work being done behind closed doors. Is a new deep black triangular UFO being built? Aviation experts suspect that the answer lies in a 1985 Pentagon document. A mysterious aircraft codenamed Aurora Project was accidentally included alongside budgets for the U-2 and Blackbird spy planes. There has been no mention of it since. It does not exist, officially. The first thing I heard about Aurora was that air traffic controllers out on the west coast were being told to expect very high speed targets on their radar screens. Um, that it was a classified program, um, that they weren't to panic and they weren't to report it to anybody else. The next piece of information, and the one that I think really started me investigating the Aurora story, was a sequence of sonic booms over California. On Thursday, June the 18th, 1992, at 7 in the morning, and on six other Thursdays at the same hour in the preceding year, a minor tremor rattled coffee cups in Los Angeles. Spurred on by telephone calls from worried residents, Jim Morrie of the US Geological Survey set out to discover what was causing this unusually punctual earthquake. At his disposal is a network of seismic recording stations. He quickly established that it was a double sonic boom from a supersonic aircraft. Morrie compared the signature of the aircraft's sonic boom with the patterns produced by those of the space shuttle landing outside Los Angeles and by the SR-71 Blackbird on its world speed record transcontinental flight in 1991. It was completely different. The size and spread of the boom is unique. We actually have quite a few sonic booms in Southern California. One of the reasons is that the space shuttle lands at Edwards Air Force Base, which is in the desert here. It's possible to tell the direction, the speed, and the height of the object that's producing the sonic boom if you have good instrumental recording. So for these mystery booms that we saw, it's clear that they are flying um, offshore. Um, because we don't have any stations there, we don't have very much data, so we really couldn't get an accurate estimate of how fast that particular object was traveling. All we can really say is it was traveling faster than the speed of sound. And one of the possibilities that it could be meteorite, and there are instances of meteorites producing similar booms. Obviously, though, a meteorite happening every Thursday morning seems a little unlikely. The breakthrough came when Bill Sweetman received an eyewitness drawing of what could only be the aurora. I had written a couple of aurora stories suggesting that the evidence was accumulating that something was out there. And I received in the mail a sketch and a note from a man named Chris Gibson. This eyewitness is one of the best in the business. Chris Gibson was a member of Britain's Royal Observer Corps. He was part of their elite international recognition team, one of the top military aircraft observers in the world. One day in 1989, whilst working on an oil rig in the North Sea, a colleague called Chris outside. There was a formation of four aircraft. The lead aircraft was a KC-135 Stratotanker, and off its port side were two F-111 fighter bombers. Off the tail of the KC-135 Stratotanker, it was a black triangular aircraft. It no, no wings, no tail, a perfect triangle. And uh, there's nothing that I've ever seen before looked like that, which uh, was an unusual occurrence because uh, I'm trained in instant recognition by the Royal Observer Corps. And uh, if I didn't know what it was, it's not in any books. This shape and the sonic booms told Bill Sweetman a great deal. If you're looking at an aircraft that is designed to fly at what's loosely called hypersonic speeds, that's 